Thank you all for joining. Uh, my name is Dr. Rhys Akhtar, co-founder of Deeper Signals. Joined with me on the call is my fellow founder, Uriel. And we're really excited to um, spend this time with you to really talk about two new tools that we've been building, the Core Drivers Pro and the Core Values. We're gonna share a little bit about how these two works and really explain why we believe that they are the next evolution of talent assessment. But before I do so, I just want to ask us all a question, and that is, how well do we really know ourselves? It was Socrates who first asked us to know thyself, and thousands of years later, we're still really struggling to answer this question. This is kind of paradoxical now, because we live in a hyper-connected world where every behavior and decision that we make is captured, and AI algorithms can know us better than we know ourselves. Yet, we still lack the self-awareness and insight that's really needed to help us facilitate personal and professional change. And when we think about the workplace, this lack of self-awareness and understanding has real consequences. For example, leaders do not understand their people, managers don't know how to engage or communicate with their teams, and individuals just don't know how to collaborate and work with their partners. All in all, this lack of self-awareness is really contributing to ineffectiveness, low performance, and disengagement at work. And so if we can really help people to become better understood and more self-aware, we can really start to make more meaningful attempts at growing talent and changing behavior and helping us realize our goals at every level of the organization. However, to really do this, to really achieve this self-awareness at scale. We actually need a new approach to conducting talent assessment. What I mean here is the status quo of understanding and measuring talent is fundamentally broken. There's three ways uh, this is the case. The first is its cost. Talent assessments as we, as we know them are expensive and typically resigned to the top of the organization. You know, while that's really helpful for senior leaders, that means individual contributors and mid-level managers are going through their careers without understanding themselves, really understanding their talents, and getting that feedback and support that they need to thrive and grow. It doesn't quite make sense that we let people uh, ascend in the organization and then try to coach them and change their behaviors. The second reason why we need a new approach is the fact that talent assessments are cumbersome and unintuitive. They're very complex and they typically require professionals with advanced degrees to help make sense of them. If we're really trying to help everyone in the organization upskill, adjust and learn new talents to help them stay ahead of changing complexities in the market, such as AI, automation, adjusting to working from home and so on, then we really need to help everyone have an accessible approach to understanding themselves and a clear way of developing their talents. And then finally, the current approach to assessing talent is broken in that it fundamentally fails to turn awareness into action. Current assessments are static. They just tell you how you are now and how you typically behave. They do not give you the support, the resources that are necessary to help you really realize and grow as an individual. Solving for these problems and really offering a new approach, a new paradigm to understanding and measuring talent is the reason why we created Deeper Signals. And that's why we're so pleased to share with you today the Core Drivers Pro and the Core Values. These two new diagnostics offer that next evolution of assessment using machine learning algorithms, great technology, and data from over 100,000 working adults. These two new tools really offer a brand new way of understanding someone's strengths, risks, and motivations. They're designed to fundamentally change the way that we understand talent in three ways. The first is providing really engaging and intuitive insights that can raise self-awareness using plain language, using accessible design, everyone can understand themselves. The second way is by providing really personalized and meaningful development pathways for everyone. What this means is we can take everything that we've understood about your dispositions, your characteristics, your motivations, and serve up personalized insights, the kind of insights that a CEO would get from their executive coach. What that means is you can really grow talent 
across the organization. And then finally, these tools provide a continuous cycle of feedback. So what that means is you can really support change and really grow talent over, um, over a continuous period of time. What we know about personality now is that it can be changed. And the only way it can be changed is with real targeted interventions and clear self-awareness. And that's what these tools are designed to do. So what goes into making the next evolution of personality assessment then? Well, at the heart of all of this is the user experience. Typical personality assessments are long, cumbersome, and quite frankly, boring. No one really enjoys taking them. And so what we've done is to completely rethink the relationship that we have between the individual taking the assessment and the person asking them to complete the assessment. So what I mean here is we use great UI, really clean design, and a conversational format in understanding and measuring people's dispositions. So what this really means in practice is that people feel understood rather than assessed. Further, we really respect and understand that people are time poor. They don't have time to complete 200, 400, 600 item surveys to really understand you know, how, they, uh, how they behave and the things they value. And so using a mobile approach as well as machine learning, we're able to really condense these assessments down to just under 10 minutes while still having a full picture of someone's dispositions, their values, and their risks. So what that means is you can really deliver these things at scale using the delivery as well as the items themselves. And the fact that it's intuitive means it's an open, transparent experience that can be deployed from the top of the organization as well as um, at entry level positions too. The third factor that makes these tools unique is a digital coach. So as I briefly mentioned before, the current paradigm of tools are flawed in that they do not turn awareness into action, nor do they scaffold to change. And so as you will see later, that our tools take everything we've understood about you, condense that down and provide everyone with that personalized development plan from a digital coach so that everyone can have a unique pathway to really realizing their full potential. And then finally, it really rests on the fact that we want to give and bring more data to the talent conversation. So the ability to scale these tools and get really accurate data means that you can start to have more objective, um, remove bias from your talent decisions, and also really understand your workforce. Using real-time analytics and dashboards, you can get the critical data that you need to make the right decisions. And so with these innovations, you can really start to grow talent across every level of the business in ways that previous tools do not allow. For example, at the individual level, no matter where you are in the organization, you can get that self-awareness that's necessary to really perform at, at the top of your potential and get those insights to have a, a more unique, tailor-made approach to learning and development, moving away from this one-size-fits-all approach that we just know doesn't work. At the team level, we can really help uh, combat the toxic leadership and managerial ineffectiveness that we see in every organization. We can help leaders become better coaches and really understand the way that their team thinks and behaves and solves problems. Using this data, you can then develop and design high-performing teams, as well as really improve um, group cohesion. And then at the organizational level, you can really scale this data and have a deeper understanding about your workforce, improve your succession planning, and really understand the cognitive diversity in your organization. From there, you can really assess how fit is your organization, how fit is your talent, to your strategic goals, and then start to make more informed decisions around how you deploy that talent. And so one thing that really kind of, at the core of everything that we do, is the fact that it's built upon the science of personality. We don't skimp on this, and despite having lots of cool innovation and great design, we still make sure that we're holding true to everything that we've understood about people's dispositions, the way they make decisions, and what motivates them. So for example, our core values tool is built upon the five-factor model, which is um, the de facto model of understanding and describing people's personality. We've conducted many validation studies to show how this tool 
predicts different behaviors and is related to different outcomes. Whereas our core values tool, which is really designed to help people understand what motivates and engages them, is built upon self-determination theory, one of the most validated um, and widely researched models of human motivation. And so everything that we do is validated. We have um, technical manuals to demonstrate that these insights are reliable and accurate um, compared to everything else that is on the market. One thing that's really unique about our approach to um, integrating science into our tools is the fact that we still don't, um, that, that we still uphold and manage this user experience focus. So for example, rather than telling someone in their report that they're 10% conscientious, which just has a negative connotation, we appreciate that no matter where you are in the continuum on any scale is associated with different strengths and different challenges. And so rather than just reducing people down to percentiles, our user reports provide people with different adjectives that describe their core values or their core drivers. What this means in practice is that everyone gets a set of neutral ways to describe themselves and each other. This creates a more open, transparent approach to having productive talent conversations, as well as just communicating with each other, because you now have a taxonomy um, and a set of labels to describe each other. Removing some of that ineffectiveness, removing some of that conflict can arise due to a lack of understanding. And so that was just a short overview around what the core drivers and the core values is and what makes it special. What I'd like now to do is to pass it over to Uri, who will give us a demonstration around what these insights look like and how we use data. As Reese mentioned, the participant is the most important person in, our, in the way we think about talent assessments and um, personality. And so the, the three components that I'll demo to you are st start with taking the assessment, right? What does that experience feel like for the individual? Um, the user report um, at the end of the assessment, and then of course the insights that we can then get to drive behavior change and organizational change. Um, so starting with the, the user assessment, you can see here on my screen, I um, have taken the Core Drivers Pro. I haven't yet taken my core values, so I can start that. And I'm in the process of taking the Core Drivers. And what, what that looks like is that conversational format that Reese mentioned. So if I had to choose, I am more crazy or concrete. And that's not true, I'm actually more crazy. But if I had to choose, I'm more uh, you know, enthusiastic or chilled, probably enthusiastic. And so you kind of go through this in an almost gamified fashion. Um, there are 60 word choices that we've gone through a whole lot of research to come up with. Some of them more negative, some of them more positive. You can see what just popped on my screen is a little nudge because we found that some of them took a user some time or some, or obviously depending on your personality, actually you may um, really go down a rabbit hole of thinking about which word you um, want to choose and so it nudges you along because the idea is your gut reaction you know, over a number of iterations will tell us everything we need to know. I won't go through all of these um, but I can take a break in the middle, save and exit. It will save my results and I can go back in and continue that later. And so the user experience as Reese mentioned is, is critical and it's not only critical because users deserve that, because too often we have treat, you know, we have historically done assessments to people instead of taking them with us on, on the journey. Um, but it's also critical for accuracy and validity because user fatigue drives inaccurate results um, and drives people away from uh, being engaged and involved in the assessment experience. Then once you finish the assessment, this is the report that a user would see in the Core Drivers Pro. Now there are, there are four sections to the report that we'll go through. So the first and most important thing to notice is the Core Drivers. In this report, my Core Drivers are disciplined, outgoing, and considerate. And again, we don't wanna overwhelm you with information. 
There's obviously a lot here. There's core drivers. There's an additional three scales, as you saw on the slides. Um, but what we do is we pick out the three most important drivers that, based on our research, we believe will you know, be the first thing that someone notices about you. And it's, it's in order. And so um, without overwhelming you, we can say, OK, uh, you're more disciplined than flexible. You're more outgoing than reserved. And you're more considerate than candid. If all you do is remember that and you read the descriptions here, you already have gleaned value as a user from your report. You have become more self-aware. You understand that your nature is to be more disciplined and you walk away. Now, if you're more discerning and or you're working through this with your manager or a coach, we have the deeper dive section, which allows you to take a deeper dive. And so here, you can see the core drivers again. You also see the secondary drivers. These are also um, part of what makes you, you, but um, might not be the first thing that someone notices about you. Or they might be, as we kind of like to say, a wing to your core drivers, right? They might color or give context to your core drivers. And see so here I see I'm more curious than pragmatic, more stable than passionate, and more driven than laid back. And finally, if I am really digging deep, I can look at what we are in the sub drivers for each driver. So those are the five components that make up each driver. And I can understand by clicking on each one, um, what about outgoing? You know, I, I was low on thrill seeking, but high on friendly and sociable. And that's why I've lost some points kind of on, on the outgoing. Um, and so just zooming back out, you can see how this creates a language for users to quickly adopt in a non-judgmental, non-negative context. It doesn't put you in a, a box because I'm, you know, I'm somewhere on this scale for sure. I may be closer to outgoing or closer to reserved, but not one or the other, um, and, and provides rich scientific information to help you understand who you are. That's the, the driver section. So moving on to to the risk section. And I think this is one area where deeper signals really shines is we have, we've moved away from the older model of looking at risks or derailers as you know, independent constructs, kind of not, you know, not clinical versions of what would otherwise be clinical personality disorders. And instead we have gone with the, the latest research which looks at it as extensions of normal personality. What happens when I overuse the aspects of my personality that otherwise are my strengths, the things that actually I bring to the table and make me shine, but under stress or overused are going to present risks to me or my team or my uh, organization. That's, you know, I, what that does is, again, going back to the participant and as being the core focus here, that allows the participant to make sense of this in a whole new way. I don't need to think about 20 scales and, and how each one of them interact both with me and each other. I just think about my core drivers. I'm disciplined. But being a very disciplined person, that can present a risk of becoming rigid, especially if I'm overusing being disciplined. And now the behavior change aspect of what we do becomes really transparent because I need to push the needle back a little bit. I need to be aware of my discipline and my propensity to become rigid under, under stress. And how can I be, be less disciplined or be, you know, move the needle a bit so that it's no longer a risk? Um, and I won't go into every, every tab here, but as you scroll through, you can see there's tips that we provide for how to mitigate the risk, implications for leaders and implications for decision making, um, all related to the risks that connect to your core drivers. The teamwork section is where we see, you know, if you're, if you're in quarantine, as we all are, um, or most of us anyway, all right, pers our personalities probably are not terribly impacting our performance because there's no one there to be interacting with us and receiving, and except maybe our family. But uh, in, in teams, um, that when we are interacting with teams, and I guess digital teams as well, and we can talk about that at the end, um, that's where it really starts to impact um, our 
performance and our organizations. And so we have the teamwork section, which continues through with the theme of your core drivers and your core risks and presents how the core drivers and risks will show up in a team and what you can do to make sure that they're showing up in a positive way. And so then you, know, you have the team skills, it's the same discipline outgoing and consider it with information on how it impacts the team, risks for how it could potentially um, show up in a team in a negative way and how to mitigate the risk. And then maybe the area that I'm most excited about in terms of our future development is the digital coach. And so here's where it comes together, the core, your core drivers and your core risks, and we curate based on your scores, um, interactive and rich content that um, can help users change their behavior in small ways or um, develop their personalities. And that's key because despite what uh, the science may have told us 20 years ago, personality can change. We can change our personalities. It's not static. In fact, from our own user research, one of the things that turns most users away from accepting and becoming aware of their personality and getting involved in it is this idea of a shoebox. Is I don't want to be put into this box um, told that this is who I am and this is who I'll be for the rest of my life. Uh, it, the reality is with you know, consistent and focused interventions, personality can be adapted and changed and that's what coaches and, and managers are, are there to help us do and that's what our tool really is there to help users do. And so as you, know, you just skip through these tabs thinking strategically, <laughs> here's um, an HBR article and a video and we continue to evolve this feed of information um, as well as for our clients, we can customize this to adapt to your organization or your learning and um, development competency model so that it, it's, it's a good match. Um, the, the next generation of this, which is now in development, will have even more interactive content learning experiences um, journeys that users can go on and to actually set goals for themselves to, let's say, become more outgoing or to become more flexible. So that's, um, that's the user report. And I think the, the third component, so we, we did the assessment and the, the experience of going through the report. And the final component is what does it look like for an administrator on our platform to dive into the insights that they've gleaned from, from their team? And for that, I'll give you a quick overview. Here I've pulled up um, what the, the, gra the insights section of our backend looks like. And so you, you can see I've you know, dived into this group of users. I'm in insights and I'm in summary. And here I can see, okay, eight participants took it in this group. Um, average completion time is, was one minute. That's not very realistic. It usually is about five or six minutes. That's because I generated all these automatically for the demo. Um, and then I can see here, you know, stats and data on the five-factor model, if that's what I'm comfortable with. <laughs> I can also see radar charts on the core drivers. I can see core driver frequency. Um, I have different groups selected here, so I can put all of my users in groups. Now I have all 17 users, and so you can see how that, those update in real time. I can, I can go through um, responses and add users to groups. So I can look at my high potentials and compare them to you know, my engineering group. Is, are they innovative enough? Is my IT and uh, project management office diligent and disciplined enough? And so it, it's a matter of aligning strategy and diversity of thought with, um, <laughs> with, you know, with each other. And so you can, you can use this interactive insights panel to go through all of that. In the individual users tab, um, you can select different filters to filter through users. You know, I can say, okay, I want people who are either more or less candid and apply it and that will update the, the table with those users. Um, we, we can look at, at various heat maps to look at different groups of users and see kind of where they are either higher or lower on, on different scores. And, and the final piece that I want to look over with you is what we've just started building out, which is you know, how to create dynamic teams and compare them to each other. And so in this section, I can search through my group of people and I can you know, take myself 
and then uh, I'll just take you know a random group of of people and make two teams. And so I can say, okay, with you know, in this team I have these three people, in this team I have these three people, and how do they compare with each other? And then on on the bar chart that shows out, you can look and see um, team one and team two, you know, how they look on the core drivers, and then when I add them in, you know, which team is maybe you know this one, this team is going to be more considerate, and and uh, you know they're going to be pretty the, much the same undriven. And this one actually came out not that different, but obviously depending on the team, you sometimes see large gaps. Um, and, and you can do this live and you can add in groups and, and lots of other cool features that we'll be adding to the team section to help our clients uh, understand their teams. So I, th I think that captures the tool and technology that we have now and for the Core Drivers Pro out of box, as well as um, some of our roadmap items. And Reese, I think back over to you. Thank you for that, Uri. So now that you've seen how the, the tool works, how the reporting is presented back and some of the data that is generated, I just wanna close out and ask a, um, answer a question, which is, again, really how can the core diagnostics, that is our suite of tools, really be used to kind of help your business and help your clients? So the first off, the immediate way that you can drive impact using these tools is to increase self-awareness. So here it's about democratizing that insight enabling everyone to understand themselves and get the support that they need to really realize their potential. This means that you can go deeper within an organization, assess more people and get super accurate data that you need to um, transform talent processes. The second way is that you can use these tools to really drive behavior change. So as Uri mentioned, we now know from the science of personality that targeted and structured interventions coupled with self-awareness can bring about real significant change in someone's dispositions. And so using accessible reports and that digital coach feature alongside talent analytics, you can really start to have more of an impact and grow talent at scale. And then finally, it's about using these tools in high volume. Their short assessment experience and the fact that it's a mobile first approach means that you can distribute this assessment entire inside an entire organization what that means is it generates a lot of really helpful and really deep data about your people how they work and how they interact with each other scaling that up you then have the critical insights that you need to make better talent decisions and so with that what i would like to do is for you to invite you all to complete the core drivers pro for yourself if you just follow this link um, on any device and we'll also be sharing it around um, so no worries if you can't grab it right now you can try this assessment out for yourself, really experience the report, and take a deep dive within each of those four sections that Uri mentioned. And so with that, I just want to say thank you for your time this morning. It's really great to um, share these developments with you all. And we'll be following up um, with a recording of this slide and some more information about these tools. And so we're really excited to hear um, your feedback and explore how they can be used within your organizations. So thank you. And um, we've got some time for some questions. Please, anything come through in the chat? Yes. Yes. So let's um, just start from um, the top. So we have a question from uh, David who said, what is the best way for an organization that is curious but not all sure to start piloting us? That's a great question, right? What we typically do is um, with, depending what type of client is interested in using it. So if it's a, a consultancy or a coaching organization, we'll typically um, provide people with um, three or four different um, invites so they can trial it with um, their clients and really get that first-hand experience around how do people respond to the feedback? Does the coach really um, get a lot of value out of that, that, those insights? and then coach them through the, the data analytics and start to introduce new ways that they can bring data to their coaching engagements. When we work with enterprise um, clients, we typically um, suggest working with a specific team or a department, depends uh, on the size and the scope, and have everyone go through it. 
So there we would have um, a training session to help everyone understand how to understand these, how to um, use the tool, how to understand the report. We then send out the invites and then get together to really go through the data and educate um, the stakeholders. And then from there, we would have a, um, a progressed rollout um, so that everything's done in a controlled way and um, the communications can be, um, can be distributed correctly. We also have another question from Judy, um, who said, is there a, a non-pro version um, of the core drivers? And the answer is yes. So we have three diagnostic tools. We have the core drivers, the core drivers pro, and the core values. The difference between the core drivers and the core drivers pro is the amount and depth of the data. Core drivers pro just takes five minutes to complete and it lacks that, um, that core risks section that Uri mentioned, as well as an exp um, doesn't have that expanded digital coach um, container as well. The reason why we have the Core Drivers and Core Drivers Pro is to give people flexibility. We wanna be able to provide a tool for any situation. And so if there's a, a short workshop, we just wanna get a, a quick pulse of someone's uh, behavior. The Core Drivers Pro, uh, the Core Drivers, sorry, is a great tool for that whereas um, the Core Drivers Pro enables you to get to a deeper level of understanding. Um, okay, let me just keep on going. So another question is, um, have you developed a way for um, giving printable reports? Rory, do you wanna take that one? Giving printable reports? Pr printable, PDF. Oh, printable PDF reports. Um, great question. We get it often, um, not at the current moment. Um, it's, we've gotten as close as giving you a link that can, you can share with anyone, kind of like a Google Doc that you can share with anyone without permissions to log in and stuff. So you can share that with others. But um, printable is coming. And if, you're, if whoever has asked that has asked me that in the past, um, it, it is really still coming. It's just uh, you know, something a bit further down our roadmap. Um, so we've got another question as well, which is, do you offer um, additional material to coaches or consultants, um, or do they get the same results that clients get? That's a great question as well. Um, the, the actual information is the same, but we do have a flash report of sorts that uh, has everything summarized that the coach can see on the back end for each user. I didn't go through that, but of course, if you're interested, we can schedule a more detailed demo with you and show you how that how that works. Um, as well, obviously, our, co our, our clients, our coaches get all the accreditation training that we provide so that they really understand the model and the sub drivers, et cetera. And then um, are there any resources uh, to facilitate kind of team or group conversations? Um, yes, another great question and the answer is yes. Um, there's an entire accreditation that you can take um, specifically focused on teams and we can also support you with providing you with templates to, to uh, manage team facilitation workshops based off of the core drivers. That's a, usually a three hour team facilitation workshop that our, our clients are using. And then there's um, one question that I can take, which is, um, you know, we mentioned that our, our tool is as accurate or uh, more accurate than other tools. How did we determine that? So um, I can share the technical manual after this. Um, and the short answer is we had thousands of people complete the core drivers or our core values tool um, alongside other personality assessments and also peer ratings as well. And so that what we're able to do is assess the concurrent validity between our tool and other personality tools, as well as the, um, the construct validity by looking at uh, how it relates to different work outcomes and peer ratings. And so then we are able to compare the size of our correlations with other tools that enabled us to, um, uh, to make that, that assessment that this is more accurate. Uh, and I just add, Reese, like, you know, accuracy and validity is very important. And that's why we're so focused on the science. Um, but obviously at some point there's, there's negative returns, right? We can, can we ask you another thousand questions and maybe move the, move the needle the, or the error margin slightly? Of course. But at what point do we lose users? Do we lose the interest of people being engaged? Do we no longer have any impact? Or we can't really assess organizations at scale. So then as a, you know, the current state of the industry is that no one actually takes an assessment until, or if they're lucky enough to get to the top of, of the house. And so 
So those things are really important to keep in mind as well. The user experience and the format just as are just as important as the accuracy. Um, yeah. Um, Uri, how can we demonstrate the impact of the tool, and how can we link it to the use of the other tools? Link it to the use of other tools. Um, if if what you mean is um, you know, other tools currently in the market. Um, yeah, I would, I'd probably say it's, it's taking the best of a lot. So again, the science and accuracy, some of the, the tools out there, um, some of the best in class personality tools out there, but the fun and um, engage, engaging um, format of, you know, what you might say is the MBTI, for example, you know, that has probably the widest user adoption in our space. Um, so it's so a more scientific version of that. I think um, the impact on organizations and how it can be connected to other tools would be Mostly what we're seeing, the way we're seeing adoption is in learning management system and competency models. So um, the, the digital coach content that I shared with you, that, that can be customized for large, you know, larger engagements. And we can connect that to your organization, to your branding, and to the learning goals that you have, you have set up. And then one last question, Uri. Um, is there a plan to um, provide this tool in other languages? Oh, great question. Yes, um, it's it's already available in in um, Portuguese, for example, as well as um, Spanish. Um, however, caveat: it's not yet available online. Um, but we have those translations, and we're we're just waiting for the right uh, engagement to actually put that online. So, whoever whoever asked that question, get in touch. Perfect. Well, thank you all for your time and for your great questions. Um, as I, as I already mentioned, we're gonna um, share a recording of this webinar, um, as well as a copy of the slides and some additional materials um, uh, shortly. And also please reach out if you have any further questions um, or want to dig into um, anything that we've raised or even start exploring kind of how you could start piloting and trialing this tool within your own organizations and clients. We would love to have that chat and uh, make that happen. So once again, thank you for your time and have a great day. 